All right, guys, so last week we had a plan to make an app with Swift Playground. I've worked on this a little bit and I wanna take you through where I'm at and how this process is going. The idea is to build this out over the next few weeks and eventually release it to the App Store. Let's dive into the code and see where I'm at. I kind of just was sort of prototyping and getting a quick idea of what I wanted to do. And now it's time to kind of build this out a little bit and see where it goes from here. The first thing I'm gonna do is, is kind of delete the stuff that I don't need from last week. So I'm gonna delete this lazy grid, this for each. And now what we're gonna do, because here's the thing, Swift UI is great for layout and it's it's great for uh, quick prototyping, but it's it's not good for games. Even even a really basic game, it, it has its issues. You need to have access to things like update functions and touches began and all sorts of stuff. What we're gonna do instead, we're going to import Sprite Kit. I've shown this before. It's not that hard to do. We just import Sprite Kit and then down here in our V stack for our our view, we create a Sprite view and this is gonna have a scene, and we need to create this scene. We also will need to create the file for the scene. So let's do that first. Let's go over to our files, and we're just gonna create a quick file here. We're gonna call it uh, level one. All right, and this is just gonna, again, import uh, Sprite Kit, and we'll have it be a class. It will be a uh, level one, and it's gonna be SK scene. And this should be enough for now. And now what we need to do is come over to content view, which is our Swift UI. That's like the main view of the app. And we need to create our scene. So this is gonna be just a scene, SK scene, and we need to tell it what that scene is. So we're gonna let scene equal to level one and we'll give it a size um, and a height of 600 and a scene dot uh, scale mode. And we're gonna return the scene. So this is basically declaring a variable, right? We're declaring a variable and we're setting this as the scene, which is level one. And then down here, we're gonna use this variable called scene. And now when we come over here, oh, 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 oh. all right, so we have our scene, but it's, it's not displayed properly. We still need to add scale to fit here. These are basically just modifier properties. It's scaled to fit and uh, padding. So that way it kind of fits in the uh, view that we have. So we've created a dummy scene, right? There's nothing in this scene. So let's fill out the scene a little bit and, and see what we can do. So we're gonna move over to our scene. The basic concept of this game is, is just shapes and numbers and colors. And we're gonna try and come up with some kind of gameplay around this as we develop the game but I just wanna get that layout and the functionality set up first. What I came up with, or what I've come up with here is to uh, create a couple of variables first. I have an array of strings called shapes and they're gonna be a blue circle, a blue square, orange circle, and orange square. Now this is just, you know, to get started, it can expand from here. And then I have um, some grid positions and this is, you know, to replace how it was laid out in Swift UI, I'm using another array. It's very similar to what I did with the uh, Swift UI thing, except that it's working on the Sprite Kit coordinate system. So we're gonna have uh, CG points in here, and uh, I'm just gonna create one like this, and then um, I'll copy and paste. We're gonna have a total of nine of these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, 300, 500, 100, 100, 100, 300, 100, 500, and then we have uh, 500, 500, 500, uh, 100, 300, 500. That's kind of all the setup we need right now. So let's create, we're gonna do our override function. Uh, did, hang on, I'm gonna restart this. I'm not getting autocomplete. Did, there we go. All right, so we have our did move to view. And what we're gonna do in here is uh, create a variable i equals zero. And this is kind of just gonna be a setup. Um, so while i is less than a grid positions dot count, so we have our grid positions away. While i is less than that, we're going to create a bunch of shapes and place them in the grid position that i represents. So this while statement is going to create basically the, the textures or the images of the circles and the shapes. So we're gonna create a texture string, which we're gonna use later. And uh, this is just gonna be a string. We'll, we'll fix that in a second. We need to create a shape. So we're gonna have to come up here and, and, and get one more um, variable. We're gonna have a shape. And for now, we'll have it be an S case right node. Uh, what we're gonna do is actually subclass this and create a, a, a class for shapes. We'll do that in a second, but I'm just gonna write this out for now so that we can see how it all looks. Our shape is gonna be an S case right node, and we'll just do like just a basic thing here. And we'll do a CG size of one, 150 by 150. We'll, we'll see how that scales. We're gonna give it a position, and this position is gonna be the grid position at I. So whatever, whatever, you know, time, while we're going through this, we're gonna increment i, so i starts at zero. So it's gonna be the first grid position in the grid. And then as this goes through, it's gonna kind of place all of them. I, I hope you can see how this is going. I think that's actually all we need right now. We're gonna add more to this in a, in a bit, but we'll just add shape and then we're gonna add i plus equals one. And now we have boxes basically, you know, just like we had before, we had circles before, but now we have, we have our grid, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a little bit better by subclassing this out so that we have a little bit more functionality. So let's 
let's do that now. So what we're going to do is come over here and we're going to create a uh, shape class. And this is going to be another Swift file. So we'll go in and create this. We'll call this um, shape class. That's pretty, pretty boring, but that's what we're going to do. This one class, we're going to call it a shape class. S case, bright node. What we're going to do is give this a couple of variables. So we're going to have a uh, color, shape color is a uh, string. And that's going to be just empty for now and as a default value. And we're going to have it have a value, which will be an integer we'll set to zero to start. And we're going to need a label that's going to just be a label. And we're going to have it be an SK label node. Now we need to do some, uh, because we're declaring these variables, we need to do a little bit of uh, initiation. So we're going to create an override. We need to do this. And then we're going to have shape color equal, we'll default it to blue square. We're going to if you remember, we have our strings from the previous class. So we're going to be passing this data back and forth. Um, the value will set to five. The label node is just, and now we have to make sure we call the super dot init, and that's going to be a texture, color, size. And then we're going to um, do some stuff here to the label. We'll make it 55. Label dot font color is not white. And then we're going to add the label to the to the shape. So we're going to add it self dot add child, and then we'll uh, give it a position in the inside the child is going to be a CG point of zero, zero, and the label dot Z position equals one label dot text equals self dot value. So whatever the value is of this instance, when it's being created, it's going to be displayed as a label. Um, and now we need to have this we can just add that in. And that's all we should need for now, but we're gonna we're gonna need to create a texture for this in a second. But let's see what our content view looks like now. So I don't think anything changes yet because we're not using this. So we need to come in here and we um, we're gonna change this from a sprite kit. We're gonna say it's a shape class, and then we come down here and rather than a sprite kit node, what we need to do is shape class, and it's gonna be uh, an SK texture, we, which is where we get our texture. We're gonna have an image uh, named, and then we're going to have it be the texture string. Oh, it's not a string. Whatever this variable gets set to is what will be. And then we'll do uh, for color, we're gonna not add any color to this. And for size, we'll stick with that um, CG size of a width of 150 and a height of 150, because that seemed to work out well. And obviously there's no image here. So we need to get our image inside of uh, Swift Playground. So I have some images already prepared for this. So we're gonna come over to our uh, insert from, and I've already created this folder here. I'm going to select these four images here and open, and then they all should appear in here. And now when I go over to my game, you can see blue, oops, oh, wait a second, level one. So we have orange circle. If I change this to orange uh, square, they're gonna change to squares once it refreshes, or I could do a blue square. Let me again just refresh that. You can see how this is working, right? So now what I need to do is actually assign a value. So I could do shape.value equals int.random in a range. Let's go one to 10. And then I need to update the label so that it will display that correctly. So this is gonna just be uh, shape.value. So now we have that correctly labeled. Um, I don't like how the position here is a little up. So I'm gonna change it to shape.label.position. Uh, and we're going to have this be um, a CG point. And we'll do I'm gonna do zero and then minus 20. That's nice and centered, centered enough anyway. And now what I need to do is shape.color equals uh, texture string. Uh, whoops, uh, shape color. This is to help us identify this in the future. That's why that's there. Um, so now this is all nice and good, but I can't really do anything. I need to be able to tap this. So what I'm gonna do is go back to, let me close out of these here. And I'm gonna come back to my shape class and I need to create a couple of things here. So I need to make sure that we override the is user interactable. Um, so I'm just going to set this, uh, this is ignore. We're going to override touches began. Here we're going to set the self delegate, which doesn't exist. We need to create that. So up at the top here, we're going to create a delegate and this is going to actually be another Swift file. So this is going to be a weak var and we're going to create a delegate. Uh, we'll call it uh, shape clicked and we will come to our thing. And I'm just going to create another Swift file. We'll call it uh, protocols, uh, protocol shape clicked. It's uh, any object. And we're going to call a function on this called shape clicked. It's going to be a uh, shape class. That's all that this is. And now what we need to do is back in level one, we need to make sure we are conforming to um, shape clicked. And to do this, we also need to have a function here called uh, shape clicked, which is going to take look for a shape class. We'll just do a print do shape dot value shape dot shape color. Oh, I think it's like that. Let's see if this works. Not yet. Oh, duh. I need to finish setting up my delegate. We have a delegate dot shape clicked, and we are going to do self. All right. And now if I come in here, so before we can uh, we can get this, we need to do a shape dot delegate equals self. 
now you can see um, as I click on these, I get the value. So this is a 10 and it's a blue square. And then if I change this to an orange circle and then uh, refresh, one orange circle. So we're, we're getting there. Um, now what I need to do is make it so that they're not all orange circles, right? We don't want this hard-coded. We need, we need this to be a random number or a random thing or maybe a pre-planned thing. I haven't decided exactly how I'm gonna do it, but for now, um, for testing purposes anyway, uh, we're gonna create a function called get random shape. And this is just a pretty simple uh, function. We're gonna have it be uh, let random shape equals shapes dot random element. And we're gonna return a random shape. And this is, has a return of a string. And then up here, rather than orange circle, we're going to have get random shape. We have some errors. All right, we know that we've created this. It's We could we could uh, create a guard statement there, but I'm just gonna force unwrap that because I'm not 100% sure we're gonna keep this right now anyway. If we build this out a little bit more, we'll, we'll make sure it's a little safer. Uh, for now, this is what we're gonna do. And then we're going to, interesting, they're all blue. Was that a coincidence? That might've been a coincidence. Yep. Let's work on like hooking up these values down here, which are in Swift UI. If you remember, these are part of the content view. And that's kind of the next step in the process, right? Making sure that we can communicate between the two and pass data between the sprite view and the UI view that's here. So this is gonna require uh, another uh, file, which we will create now. And this is, this is um, gonna be our game data file. Here we're going to import I don't, uh, class game data. It's an observable, ob uh, observable object. And then we're gonna do at, uh, we're gonna create a few of these here. We're gonna do a var published var value one. We'll set my value two as a string. And you know, I probably will come through and refactor this to be more descriptive once I understand if it's all working and, and if this is what I want to keep. This is kind of the idea that I've come up with so far and we'll stick with that for now. Uh, published by... So we have a few uh, published variables in this game data object that's observable. And now what we need to do is come into our level one class here and kind of hook it all up so that everything works. So inside of level one, we're going to create some new stuff at the top here. And these are bindings. So we're going to bind all of that information and game data to a variable that can be accessed and updated um, through actions inside of the uh, sprite kit here. So uh, we're basically going to create a lot of these values again, but this time inside of sprite kit binding bar value two, it's a string at binding bar moves. Okay, and then now we need to initiate these. So we're gonna do value one, and that's a binding int. Uh, value two is a binding, and that is a string. That's not a period. Moves, binding int, target value, binding int, target color. So as you can tell, I'm, I'm, I have notes, I'm retyping a lot of this stuff. It, it actually helps me understand what's going on in this whole process. Uh, that's how I've set this YouTube channel up. I hope you like this approach. I try, I try to do this to make sure that um, you are able to see what I'm doing, but also that I'm not like fumbling around doing too much learning um, on camera because I find that if uh, in tutorials that I've watched, if people are stumped and kind of confused and not sure what they're doing, they're not really fun to watch. They're not entertaining. And uh, so I try and do this all beforehand and then, and I come in here and I have at least a plan for what I'm doing. So I hope you can uh, appreciate that. So right now I'm just uh, setting all these up so that we will have something that's working. Again, we just are initiate, initializing all of these uh, variables that are binded. We need to give this a uh, size and I'm gonna use the same size as our scene um, and then self.scale mode and we'll just do dot fill. And then we need to have the uh, good old fatal error issue solved. Now I, I need to do a few more things here because that's the game scene, but we need to also have this stuff put into our content view. All right, here we are, we're on the final steps here. We just need to hook all of this up in content view and hopefully it will all work. So let's jump over to content view. Uh, the first thing we're gonna need to do here is create an environment object. And this is so that uh, basically it's kind of persistent in the environment so we can see everything and, and interact with it. Uh, game data, and we're gonna set that to be game data and environment object. And now, um, you know, we have level one, but level one needs a whole bunch of parameters to it, all these bindings. Um, I like to put everything on a different line. It just makes it easier for me to read uh, what's there, especially when there's a lot of things here. So this is gonna be a dollar sign game data and, you know, just gonna go to value. So this is uh, not, this is this one, and then uh, target value. Color. 
So this should be all of those. And uh, we are going to need one other thing here. We need to have an environment object and we're gonna set this to game data just to make the preview happy. Um, yeah, okay, so it's good now. And we still have an error, let's see. I wonder if this just is waiting to refresh. Oh, 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 I'm a dum dum. These are set up like this. That should fix the errors. We have this, we're back up and running. And now what we can do with these bindings is in this V stack where we're displaying things rather than hard coding a number, uh, we can display something like um, the target and we're gonna do uh, game data. Oops, let me take out this. I'm gonna do um, self.gameData.target value. And then here, we're gonna do self.gameData.target color. And here, I'm gonna do uh, self.gameData.target moves. moves. Things are not done yet. This is obviously you can see we're not getting the right values here. Um, so we still need a little bit of work. And that's going to be done on the uh, level one class. Here. Um, first, we're going to need to get a target color. And this is like part of the setup process, right? So we're going to get a random uh, random shape, which remember is a string. And we're going to get a target value, which remember is just an integer. So we'll do a random dot range one to 10, and then we'll get a random range. So now we have, you can see every time this refreshes, it gives me a different target and a different value. And now uh, to make this into somewhat of a game, we can come down here and instead of just printing when we click on something, we can say if shape, dot value equals target value and shape dot shape color equals target color then uh, we'll uh, do a shape dot remove from parent target color equals uh, get random shape target value equals int on random and we'll do um, in one to ten and we'll do moves plus equals one else. So now we're, um, if we click on the wrong thing, uh, we're going to do moves minus equals one. And we'll do, um, for now, I guess you could, we could just randomize this, get random shape and uh, target value. We'll do another int dot random in one to 10. And then um, we can basically say uh, in a uh, if uh, moves is less than or equal to zero, uh, print uh, game over. All right, so this is this is a very basic game loop right now. Obviously we need to do a little more work to, to fix everything, but uh, let's see. So it wants a two, now there's no two on the board. So uh, we're gonna lose a move here. So now it wants a six. Again, no six. Let's see if we get something. All right, we need a blue square that's got a 10. Unfortunately, we don't have that either. A three, that's a blue square. Man, three, that's a blue circle. Hey, we got one. A six, that's an orange circle, not here. So you can see, obviously, right now, this game is kind of terrible because it's really tough. Obviously, you need some work. You need to figure out what the game loop should be. If you have some ideas, leave a comment below and let me know what you think the game loop should be and how I can make this more entertaining and more interesting. I'm going to play around with it over the next few weeks, and I'll be back again soon with another video for you guys to show you where I've gotten on this project. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like. And if you want to watch uh, another one, here's a great video that I made uh, a few weeks ago. See you later. Bye.